Hello, and welcome to our Creation Focus Worship Service and celebration of Earth Day. My name is Phoebe Morad. I'm Executive Director of Lutheran's Restoring Creation. And on behalf of our board and advisors and all the volunteers who made the service possible, I want to thank you for joining us today, but also encourage you to continue walking with us and cultivating hope and healing for all in this ministry. Today I'm speaking to you from Maswatasset Hummock, which was land first cared for by the Massachusetts people who continue to do so. We encourage you to consider the people who are the first earth keepers on the land on which you find yourself standing. We enter the song of creation. Earth cradles our ancestors, birthing new life. We enter the prayer of creation. Sky brings darkness and light, holds storms and the stars. We enter the praise of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with grasses. We enter the silence of creation. Humanity between the ground and the heavens. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our creator, the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls forth creation, evokes praise from creation, and stirs life in creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, creation, and one another. God of righteousness and justice, you have made the earth and all that is in it, but we have failed to honor your good work. We do not recognize your presence among us, and our hardened hearts do not hear creation's cry. We have made your good land a desolation, and we dishonor your image in our neighbors. Forgive us in your steadfast love, O God, for trampling your vineyards and polluting your sky. On your holy mountain, call us again to be stewards of your earth, and to join all creation in songs of praise. Amen. Rejoice, for the incarnate word has come to you. Laying aside all heavenly glory, the servant of all is obedient unto death to make of you and of all the earth a new creation. Rejoice, for Christ, from whom nothing can separate you, forgives you all your sins. Rejoice, for the one whose name is majestic in all the earth 
raises you up to newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign of the universe, your first covenant of mercy was with every living creature. When your beloved Son came among us, the waters of the river welcomed him. The heavens opened to greet his arrival. The animals of the wilderness drew near as his companions. With all the world's people, may we who are washed into new life through baptism seek the way of your new creation, the way of justice and care, mercy and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the reading. A Psalm of David. Psalm 23 Yahweh, you are my shepherd. I want nothing more. You let me lie down in green meadows. You lead me beside restful waters. You refresh my soul. You guide me to lush pastures for the sake of your name. Even if I'm surrounded by shadows of death, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they give me courage. You spread a table for me and the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and love will follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in your house, Yahweh. For days without end. First John 
3, 16 to 24. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts. And God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from God whatever we ask because we obey God's commandments and do what pleases God. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as God has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in God, and God abides in them. And by this we know that God abides in us, by the spirit that God has given us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Hi, my name is Harold Banachek. I am the pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Marble Falls, Texas. And you know what? I love early mornings. And I especially love that transition time between night and day, the special and holy time between when the sounds of night, like the cricket and the owl, begin to fade, and the sounds of day, like the cardinal and the chickadee, begin to wake up. We are immersed in sound every day, like the sounds from nature, or the voices of family and friends, to our devices in our pockets, in our favorite music we love to listen to. What's amazing is that we learn to recognize certain sounds throughout our life, like the sound of a plane that's flying over, or the voice of a parent or teacher. Today, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he goes on to say that he knows his flock and his flock know him, that the flock following him will listen to his voice. Jesus is saying that we are able to recognize his voice. Yet, how do we recognize the voice of Jesus in our life and in our world? I have a small science demonstration that may help us wonder a little more about that. So come join me. Well, here I have my handy dandy resonance demonstrator. And it's really easy to make, and you can have an adult help you make this in an afternoon. All you need is a piece of wood, some wooden dowels, and some rubber balls. Instructions for how to make this resonance demonstrator are in our YouTube video notes. So something really neat happens when I move this block of wood back and forth at different speeds. Look at what happens when I move it at a slow speed. 
Now look at what happens when I move it at a medium speed. And look what happens when I move it at a fast speed. At different speeds, a different height ball moves back and forth more wildly. And when I move the block slowly, the ball on the longest dowel moves the most. But when I move the block fast, the ball with the shortest dowel moves the most. So you may wonder what's going on. This is called resonance. Resonance happens when a bunch of small inputs, like moving a block of wood back and forth, happen at just the right time to add up to create a large movement. So what if recognizing the voice of God is about resonating with God, about being on the same frequency and the same movement with God in the world? And the word that we would use to describe God's movement and God's frequency in the world is love. Or maybe resonating with God happens when a bunch of God things happen around us at just the right time to add up to create a large movement within us, moving our hearts, giving us goosebumps, and filling us with just the right things to say or do in the moment to bring healing and life to others. So I want you to go and resonate with God's shepherding love for all, which resonates in you every moment of every day because of our good shepherd, Jesus. Amen. Grace to you and peace from Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday and happy day before Earth Day. Thank you for this opportunity to, to read and think and pray about these very rich texts that all talk about and demonstrate the intimate care that God has for God's own creation. You know, at first I was a little skeptical about how I could work in a Good Shepherd Sunday and Earth Day all at once. Um, and I remember um, when I was in high school, I was part of the All Ohio Youth Orchestra and I got to know sheep. You see, I'm a city girl and I'd never really been close to sheep other than those made with cotton balls and pipe cleaners. But our barracks were downwind of the sheep barn at the Ohio State Fair where we performed. And I had a very earthy experience with the sheep. Nevertheless, in all of the readings today, not just the Psalm, Psalm 23, so beloved, nor just the passage from John where Jesus declares that he is the good shepherd and that his own hear his voice, but the other passages as well, we hear about God's tender care, particularly and intimately involved with the creation. Very often, it seems to me, in Western Christianity and also in Western philosophical thought, there is a sense that that is with, of, that of which is of the earth, that is that which is material, is somehow inferior to that which is considered to be spiritual. And there is a great gulf between the material and the spiritual in a lot of Western thought and Western philosophy. And I think it creeps into as well our own spirituality. And that's just not the case. We believe and celebrate that the beginning of Easter started in fact at Christmas with the incarnation, where God took on human form, where God took on the form of Jesus, was incarnate, took on human flesh, and became in his earthly life the earth creature, just as Adam and Eve and all of us were created from the dust of the earth, from dirt itself, from the soil, so Jesus has taken on this material nature. And we believe and confess that even in the resurrection, Jesus is fully human and fully divine. We make a mistake and we miss a lot, I think, when we try to walk away from our own creatureliness, when we try to somehow escape uh, this world that we're in and are not able to recognize that, that God still cares about and is still creating this place, this earth, this cosmos, all of it. 
and that human creatures are just one part of the creation. And we have been called to tend this garden that God has given to us. And so when we disavow somehow our own creatureliness, I think we set ourselves off and apart from God. Luther, Luther put it this way, his understanding of God's presence in all of creation. Luther said that God's entire divine nature is holy and entirely in all creatures, more deeply, more inwardly, more present than the creature is to itself. Somehow seeing ourselves as separate also sets us up against God. And I would contend that our rebellion against or our pushback against our own createdness, the beauty of that creation, the limits of that creatureliness causes a lot of damage to the rest of creation and to ourselves. In the gospel stories, we have two accounts of women who anoint Jesus with pure nard. They came to tend to Jesus' earthly body just before his crucifixion. And Jesus praised these women for doing that. And nard, as it turns out, is an extremely rare and very pungent perfume, greatly prized in Jesus' day and still today. And the description of the aroma of nard is not one of flowers, um, but one of earthiness, of, of, of hummus almost, like, like soil of the earth. We hear in, in the story of Mary of Bethany anointing Jesus that the fragrance filled the whole room and was probably so powerful that even on the cross and in the tomb, the earthly body of Jesus still had the fragrance of the earth. It is to this good and beautiful creation that God has sent the good shepherd to tend the sheep, to take care of our creatureliness because that too is holy. And because of the incarnation of God with us in the flesh, all of our lives, that which is created, that which is temporal is also holy. In the 23rd Psalm, which we probably all know by heart, we hear about the Lord as shepherd, tending this flock, bringing them to verdant pastures, taking care of these earthly needs for food, for water, for sustenance, for peace, for wholeness, that this is the promise of how God shows up for humankind and for all of creation of which we are a part. The good shepherd cares for our earthly lives. In the gospel according to John, which we just heard, we hear how Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Sometimes people think when uh, Christians talk about these things, particularly in the face of the climate crisis that, that we're in right now, about the danger and the harm that we have caused to, to the climate, that all of this imagery about Jesus being the good shepherd is somehow just pie in the sky, Pollyannish, wishful thinking that doesn't come to grips with the actual danger which we face, the harm we have caused, and the harm that's being caused to us. But if you think again about the story in John about Jesus saying he's the good shepherd, it doesn't shy away at all from the actual dangers and perils of this world. We hear about hirelings who are willing to flee rather than lay down their lives in order to protect the charge which they have been given. But the good shepherd doesn't do that. We hear about wolves who come to snatch and to scatter. But that does not happen because the good shepherd protects the flock. We hear about other flocks and the good shepherd says those are not excluded because all will become part of this one flock. In all of these stories, all of these passages that we hear on Good Shepherd Sunday, we hear about a real flesh and blood with us God, a God who does not stay off at a distance as Bette Midler made so popular in her, her hit in the 90s, but a, a God who has come near to us, a God who is better understood and more clearly seen as we take a look at all of creation and find our place in it. 
a God who does not wish us to be walking dead or those who are agents of death, but instill, instead has called us to be agents of this living God who cares for all of creation. We also believe and confess not to let ourselves um, off the hook or not to say we have nothing to do with, with working toward the care of creation, but in order to bring hope, if not optimism, at least hope, that God is still creating, that God is still present in all of creation, and that God will bring all of creation to fruition. We hope and pray as we hear these stories of a God right near us, a God who is our good shepherd, a God who tends to the physical as well as the spiritual need of this flock, that we can be agents of such a God who brings life and reconciliation for all of the creation, not just for the human part of that creation. And this, this is actually, I think, what we are being called to do. Very often, I think people become almost hopeless when we hear about the severity of climate change. And it has been quite a year when natural disaster after natural disaster has caused fires and flooding and tornadoes and hurricanes. And when we begin to see our place in making those natural disasters even more deadly and acute, and we can lose hope, but God will never give up on God's creation. And what the world needs to hear from God's people, from God's church, that we're called to tend and steward this good garden, and that this trail of, of mercy and justice, this trail of goodness and mercy for all, this abundant life, which is the verse just before the gospel story for today, is something that God means for all of creation and that we are a part of that. We are called to be agents of life as we follow our good shepherd. Amen.
We believe in God who creates all things to live in harmony. Heaven and earth, sea and sky, sun and moon, fish and birds, mountains and valleys, forests and deserts, all animals great and small, all human beings, and cares for all creation as our perfect, loving parent. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who came to reveal the depth of God's love for all creation and teach us to live under God's reign of justice, mercy, and compassion, who suffered death on the cross to save creation from oppression, violence, and hatred, and free us from brokenness, sin, and self-conceit, who raises us with him into new life to experience joy, peace, and unity with God and all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips, empowers, and helps us to reject hatred, oppression, and violence against anyone, and to extend justice and mercy, love and compassion to all created things, earth, creatures, and humans, regardless how similar or different we are for one another. Amen. And now, siblings in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you always. As a way of sharing the peace, some of our board members from Lutheran's Restoring Creation are going to share with you what we call peaceful places. Hi. I'm Deaconess Heidi Michelson, and I'm from Heredia, Costa Rica. My peaceful place is a rainforest in the province of Limon, Costa Rica. And I love this place because all the birds and the insects remind me that I'm a part of God's magnificent creation. May God bless you with your own peaceful place. Peace be with you. I'm Pat Almondrod from St. Peter's in New York City. I find my peace not only in a particular place, but a particular time. This is New York City at sunrise, in all its woundedness, all its loveliness, and all its hope. May God bless you with your own peaceful place and time in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Professor Barbara Rossing from the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago. The peaceful place I share with you is a series of lakes in the high Alpine Lakes wilderness area of Washington State called the Enchantments. May God bless you with your own peaceful place. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Hi, I'm Phoebe Morad, and my home congregation is House of Prayer Lutheran Church in Hingham, Massachusetts. The peaceful place I'd like to share with you today is anywhere our cat John Doe decides to take a rest. He is a constant reminder in our life to find joy and peace in the present moment. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Schlesinger from Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish in Compton and Lee, Illinois. The peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is Chapel Falls in the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. My soul is calmed and refreshed as I sit and watch the water of these falls, and, and most any falls for that matter, tumble over the ledge and through and around boulders, branches, and islands. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Pastor Sandy Olson Decker. I serve at Grace Lutheran Church in King City, California. My peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is the Monterey Bay. This is a place that gives us great serenity and joy. May God bless you with your own peaceful place on this beautiful earth. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Henry Huntington from Joy Lutheran Church in Eagle River, Alaska. The peaceful place I'd like to share today is a spot our family calls the Big Swamp. The Big Swamp is peaceful to me because we're surrounded by the mountains, trees, and quiet that we love, only a half mile walk from our house. May God grant you a peaceful place of your own on this 
beautiful earth. Peace be with you. From Kansas City, Missouri. Um, peace be with you. Hi, my name is Pastor Kristen Koshman from Martin Luther Lutheran Church outside of Kansas City, Missouri. The peaceful place that I'd like to share with you is Camp Moana, an ELCA ministry located in central Ohio. It is here where countless others and I have experienced God's call and grace in and through creation. And I am so grateful for the decades of faith formation that Moana offered the world before its closure last year. May God bless you with your own peaceful place in this beautiful place we call Earth. I now invite you to turn to those who may be in the room with you and share a sign of peace. And if you're able to pause this video and take a moment to share one of your peaceful places with them. Grace and peace be with you all, saints. My name is Louis Tillman. I serve as a senior pastor to the historic St. Philip's Evangelical Lutheran Church here on the best side, the east side of Baltimore, Maryland. We are the oldest African-American Lutheran congregation in North America. We've been dealing with severe issues that have been impacting our environment, like air quality control, pollution, and different issues around lack of equal access to solar power and clean running water. The scribe Ezra says in the 10th chapter, rise up for this matter is in your hands. We will support you, so take courage and do it. We have been working with hundreds of congregations, souls, and residents to help them reduce their carbon footprint, help them with getting sustainable food and nutrition, and to be able to get COVID-19 vaccines, PPE equipment, and to be able to fight this pandemic. This Earth Day, how are you going to make your mark so that our neighbors and our generations after will see a better day? God be with you until we meet again. We are so delighted that you would join us for worship today. As we thank and praise God for the gifts God has given us in creation, we remember that we can offer God's abundance back to creation through our tithes and offerings. We invite you to continue your regular contribution to your home congregation and also consider becoming a regular donor for Lutherans Restoring Creation. You might also want to encourage your congregation to create a green team and become a regular donor as well. You can do all of that through our website, lutheransrestoringcreation.org, and by clicking the blue Donate button. It will lead you through a series of steps and you will be able to make a secure donation online. You can also find our mailing address in the bulletin. Now let us pray. You brought us forth from the very earth itself. We share with others what you have entrusted to us. Bless these offerings and compel us to use them not only to serve our human neighbors, but also to serve our sister sky, our brother mountain, our mother earth, and all our family in creation. We pray this in the name of the word that dwells among us. Amen. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, your great love has placed us in your creation, and you commanded us to care for it. Your works declare glory and strength, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded or destroyed Earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. Where we have become estranged from creation, from the creatures with whom we share this planet, grant us your peace. Creator God, hear our prayer. As we join together in celebration of the earth, we know that there are many things that thwart our efforts and our responsibilities to your creation. The issues of the, envir of the environment and conservation are often associated with differing political views. For openness to learn about environmental issues and concerns, we pray. Creator God, Hear our prayer. In such a great and complex world, we often feel so small and helpless, as if what we do has no impact on the rest of your creation. Yet we know that because we are created in your image, we are connected with the entirety of creation, 
just as you are. For an awareness of how our own lives can be modified to help protect the environment, we pray, Creator God, hear our prayer. In an environmental catastrophe, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor, yet we rarely hear their voices, silenced as they are by the realities of global life. For those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and other environmental issues, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. In recent days, even the ground under our feet has begun to tremble, reminding us that we live together in a fragile community of life. For our own community, for our city and state, we pray. Creator God, hear our prayer. As members of this creation, we live and die according to the cycle of life that is common in all the world. For those in our midst who suffer from sickness and death, we pray, Creator God, hear our prayer. God of the sun and moon, of the mountains, deserts, and plains, God of the mighty oceans, of rivers, lakes, and streams. God of all creatures that live in the seas and fly in the air. God of every living thing that grows and moves on this sacred earth. We are formed by Christ into your people, called to bring the world into your marvelous light. As the body of Christ, we are messengers of ecological vocation. We are entrusted with caring for the earth which you have created. Help us to love and respect it, to repair what we have damaged, to care for what you have made good and holy. Give us the wisdom and the passion to change our mind, our hearts, and our ways. Let us be the change we pray for, bringing about the ecological conversion which grows and speaks to every corner of the earth for our sake now and for every generation which is to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, of flowers and trees, of butterflies and bees, of squirrels and mountain lions, bless you, keep you, and strengthen you for the, for the work of loving all God has made. In the name of the, God the Creator, Son, and Spirit. Amen. sparrow, God of the whale, God of the swirling stars, how does the creature say all? How does the creature say praise? God of the earthquake, God of the storm, God of the trumpet blast How does the creature cry woe? How does the creature cry save? God of the rainbow, God of the cross God of the empty grave How does the creature say grace how does the creature say thanks God of the hungry God of the sick God of the prodigal how does the creature say care how does the creature say love God of the neighbor, God 
God of the foe, God of the pruning hook, how does the creature say love? How does the creature say peace? God of the ages, God near at hand, God of the loving heart, how do your children say joy? How do your children say home? Go in peace, care for creation. Thanks be to God.